Good evening and welcome to the League of Women Voters of Stanislaus County. Tonight, Wednesday, September 16th, we are happy to host the Oakdale Irrigation District Candidate Forum. With us, we have running for Division I, Donald Duke Cooper and Ed Tobias. And running for Division IV, we have Henry Doninga and Linda Santos. Tonight, volunteering from the League of Women Voters of Stanislaus County, serving as the role of moderator is George Britton. Our timekeepers are Karen and Ed Tobacco. I'm Amy Wolf, serving as technical support, and our offline support is Judy Kropp. We are recording tonight's forum, and we will make it available in two days on the League of Women Voters of Stanislaus County website, which is www.lwvstanislaus.org. It will also be available on our Facebook page where you can follow us at LWV Stanislaus County. As George will explain in greater detail, tonight we have some basic guidelines that our candidates will be following. Each candidate will have two minutes to provide an opening statement where they introduce themselves to you, the voters. We have a number of questions that have been provided to us in advance by voters and all candidates will be given one answer, well, excuse me, one minute to provide an answer to each of our questions. And each candidate will also have two minutes to provide a closing statement. We are so excited that you are joining us as we navigate a new world that includes digital candidate forums. And with that, it is my pleasure to turn things over to George Britton, our moderator. Thank you, Amy. And on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Stanislaus County, I do want to welcome all of our viewers, but more in particularly, I want to welcome and thank the candidates who have done really two things in life that many of us never had the nerve to do. Number one is they have come out and placed themselves on the line to be elected and deal and help their neighbors uh, and their friends in uh, governance. Uh, and number two, you've subjected yourself to this technology, uh, which as we all know is new for many of us. So thank you very much for, for this evening. As Amy said, there will be opening comments. Uh, we have done a random selection of the order, uh, and we will be starting at, with Mr. Doktinga, uh, Doktinga, Go Tinga, and I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, and then Ms. Santos, Mrs. Santos, and then we will ask Mr. Cooper, who is coming to us on telephone, and then Mr. Tobias in that order. Uh, a little bit about the League of Women Voters. It's a nonpartisan organization which encourages informed and active participation in government. It works to increase the understanding of major public policy issues and influences public policy through education and advocacy. Just as an aside, if it's not obvious, they have now allowed male members, so uh, we encourage all uh, to become a member of the League of Women Voters. With that, I will read, I will uh, ask uh, Mr. Do Tinga to please give us his two minute opening. Thank you and be sure you unmute. All right, can you hear me now? Very well. Good. Well, hi everybody. I'm Henry Dotinga and uh, I'm a retired automotive technician. Um, I'm a first generation American from a large Dutch family of immigrants. And uh, we've been fortunate to live in Oakdale for 48 years. I grew up in the dairy farm business and my family, faith and education have been instrumental in developing both my work ethic and my ties to the community. I eventually became the head mechanic on my family farm and I went off to pursue a career as an automotive technician. After 25 years in the service industry, I suddenly faced a series of health challenges. But my faith and the community provided a stable foundation that allowed me to move past them. I've been gifted with a second chance at life and I'm committed to giving back to the community that showed me such steadfast support. 
I live on a small ranchette in Oakdale with my wife, Diana, of 37 years, and our four children. Uh, water, water is the lifeblood of the Central Valley, and the overreach of a state is disrupting our community and diminishing the prosperity of farms, business, and residents in our area. My goal as your director will be to preserve our water rights, increase reliable supply, and promote groundwater sustainability while allowing us to cultivate the harmony and unity that have been the bedrock of our Oakdale community for generations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Santos. Good evening. I'm Linda Sanis. My family has been in Stanislaus County 150 years. Uh, my maiden name is Basso. The Basso Bridge out of LaGrange is named after my great grandfather. My husband and I uh, run cattle with our five children, their spouses and 10 grandchildren. We all are recipients of the bountiful joys of growing up and living in this community. I've been on the OID board now for five years and I'm running for re-election. I am adamant about making sure that whatever the district does as far as keeping our water here, it is done legally and above board and not shortcutted to make it a target for the state to take from us. I wholeheartedly want to continue what I have done from this point forward. There are so many things still to be done and there are serious things um, that have not even been made public that the public needs to be made aware of. And I wanna be part of that to protect our community. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Mr. Cooper. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, y'all. My name is Duke Cooper. I've been in Oakdale for 32 years, married to a woman for 33, Patty. I'll tell you what sets me apart from the rest of the community is I served six years in the Marine Corps, two years active duty, four years reserve. I joined the construction trades coming up as an apprentice through project management in the trade. Some of the biggest jobs that I've done in this area was TID's uh, turbine combustion power plant as construction manager at uh, on Service Road and NCPA uh, power plant in Lodi on Eight Mile Road. The, the thing I think that really uh, sets it apart for me is, is I have two neighbors within the last month where their wells have gone dry within 700 feet of my home. And the thing about uh, the, the power plants and other projects that I've worked on is I did, I was in charge of all the infrastructure, bringing the water from PID and from NCPA's uh, water treatment plant, make sure that it was supplied on time. And I, got a proven track, I got a proven track record of bringing my projects in under budget and on schedule. And I think that uh, I live by the Marine Corps motto, Semper Fidelis, means always faithful, always true. I live that to this day and I'm dedicated to this county to make sure that we keep all of our water here in our district. Thank you. Mr. Tobias. Okay. My name is Ed Tobias. Um, I'm a retired irrigation manager from Modesto Irrigation District. Um, I have a BS in agricultural science and management from UC Davis. I've taken continuing education at Cal Poly, UC Davis, UC Irvine, University of Nebraska, Lincoln, and various CAPCA and PAPCA, PAPA classes. Um, 28 years in irrigation district experience, I started in water delivery, promoted to survey, promoted to engineering technician, promoted to irrigation superintendent, and finally to irrigation manager, where I spent the last 20 years of my career. Duties included overseeing water delivery diversions from LaGrange Dam to Modesto Reservoir, releases from Modesto Reservoir through the delivery system, additionally was in charge of construction maintenance, which included equipment operators, pipe repair, carpenter crews, pump crews, weed control, both aquatic and terrestrial. I'm a licensed pest control advisor, advisor with certification in plant pathogens, weed control, insects, and vertebrate pests. 
Um, I developed an annual budget for my department, both capital and O&M, heavily involved with the irrigation master plan with Dr. Charles Burt and Bo Freeman. Before I came to Oakdale, I was on the Waterford Elementary School Board, and they wanted a high school there. Um, we, we negotiated a settlement with Oakdale and unified both districts, passed a bond in Waterford, and started building of the Waterford High School. During this process, I was really impressed with Oakdale, and I moved here in 2003. I love this area, and all three of my daughters graduated from Oakdale High School. One thing that I wanted to emphasize, I spent a great deal of time with groundwater management at MID. We had 113 wells and uh, recorded monthly statics and uh, enjoyed, you know, I, I worked with that for probably 25 years. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Tobias. Okay, we will start our questions now. And the first person I'll ask uh, is Mr. Cooper, who will be on the phone. Uh, remember, it's a one minute response period. The first okay. question is, what are the two major challenges you see are facing OID? And if elected, how would you address those challenges? Well, the, the major concern that I have for OID, number one is some fiscal responsibility. And first and foremost is quit exporting our water for a temporary financial gain. With our groundwater uh, basin and our aquifers depleting at a rapid rate, we need to keep every drop of water. They're exporting our water right now, they call surplus. We don't have surplus water. We have uh, domestic wells that are going dry at a rapid rate, two within 700 feet of my home, and, and commercial wells. We need to stop uh, what we're doing. We need to stop living in the past. OID needs to look at the future. The new building they want to build for eight to ten million dollars, I think, is is a bust. And being in the construction seconds. trade for forty, I'm sorry, fifteen seconds. Uh, and I just, uh, I think, I have the proven uh, uh, construction trade, the the drive that a marine comes with. And I will continue to make uh, OID a better place, more user-friendly for the constituents, and, and make sure that we keep our, our every drop of water here. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Tobias, do I need to reread the question, or do you remember? Please. Okay. What are the two major challenges facing OID? And if elected, how would you address those challenges? Okay, the, the challenges that I see are the, uh, the state water grab. They're, they're trying to um, acquire 40% of the unimpaired runoff from the Stanislaus River watershed for the use of the state, which would greatly reduce our, our, our water. Um, it would really put a harm, put, a, a, a difficult, put us in a really difficult position. Um, I know OI, uh, TID, and MID have come out with a movie to the last drop, and it's 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 a really informative type of thing. The the other challenge that I see is that we need to keep surface water being applied, which is we need to make sure that our surface water is used here, and we have to keep the rates low in order to do that. Um, it's a uh, it's a balance that we have to make because if if the, the rates go too high, they're going to start pumping and then we're not gonna be using the surface water that we have. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Dotinga, should I repeat the question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, what are the two major challenges you see are facing OID? And if elected, how would you address those challenges? Well, I. I think the, the primary issue is keeping our water local and um, that, that really boils down to uh, what's happening with the state. Um, it, it's inevitable that we're going we're gonna to have to face that, the unimpaired flows. And so whatever amount of water we do have allotted every year, um, making sure that, that, that our local farmers get the full allotment every year and that we make it available to our out of district farmers as well. Um, and uh, the, the second issue that I think is, is very imperative that we, 
we work on stopping is all the pumping in the Eastlands, which is depleting our aquifer. Um, that, uh, th that is depleting our groundwater resources. And like, like uh, others have said as well, wells are going dry for small places like my own. And, and it's definitely a concern for people in our area. Thank you very much. Mr. Santos. Yes, the, the two that I have focused on since I got on the board is the cell of water out of our basin. I have a track record since I got on the board. I have not voted for any water to be sold out of the area except for the very first vote that I took because I was uh, advised that that was what was needed for the district. I had a program, a five-year program, that I was supporting for the east side of our district that three of the uh, board members on the board um, voted down. They've tabled it. It could have supplied surface water to the ground pumping farmers on the east side of the district. I'm all for keeping water right here for our prosperity. Thank you very much. We'll go on to the next question uh, and it'll start out uh, with Mr. Dotinga. The question is really um, twofold. Will you support providing OID water to Oakdale residents? And the second part of that is, would you support providing OID water to Oakdale City Parks? And please explain your answers. Yes, I would uh, to support that. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, OID has already done that with the Gregor Park program. Um, and if, if Oakdale City would meet the district um, together on that and would, you know, would put together a water treatment system, then the district has already set aside 10,000 acre feet of water to provide the city with that water as well. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Santos, should I read that again or same question, please? Yes, would you repeat? Yes. Uh, will you support providing OID water to Oakdale residents? And two, number two, or a subset of that, to Oakdale City Parks? And please explain your answer. Yes, absolutely. Um, that was another uh, area that I had uh, investigated and uh, spoke with uh, engineers in that area. And there is a water plant over on Dodds Road that South San Joaquin has in place. And we could partner with South San Joaquin to engineer uh, delivery of surface water, filtered surface water to the city of Oakdale. We could also build our own. We have the revenue. We could build it right here for the people of our community. Mr. Dodinga was correct that uh, the uh, surface water has been provided uh, to the parks that have a turnout near them so that they can use it. But I think it's very plausible that we can do more. We just have to have the desire to keep the water here, use it here, and not be looking at water sales across the, uh, the valley. Thank you, Mrs. Santos. Uh, next will be Mr. Tobias. Okay, yeah. Um, no, uh, the, the ability to give, to sell water or not sell, but to provide water to the city of Oakdale is, is, uh, is a really great opportunity. But um, bringing it in from uh, the treatment plant over on Dodds Road is an idea making your own, our own little treatment plant here with uh, some of the microfiber technology that goes, that is new and starting. But one thing that you gotta be real careful with that because I was at MID when they built the water treatment plant and we had some real problems with that. There was a couple of lawsuits. It needs to be studied thoroughly, but I would love to be a part of that and, and see that happen so that we can get Oakdale off of groundwater and onto surface water. It would really be a benefit to the aquifer. 
Um, yes, the city park thing is a great idea. Landscaping with surface water, I've always been in favor of that. We tried to get that into the city of Modesto, but I'd love to do it with the city of Oakdale, and they've already begun that process. I'm fully in favor of that. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Cooper, do you need the question repeated? Um, no, sir. Okay, thank you. It's your turn. One minute. Well, I'm all for delivering the, the citizens of Oakdale water. The Oakdale's usage of water is less than 5,000 acre feet per year. Residents in Oakdale have had OID water in the past, and that's been cut off. But now, the, to the parks, absolutely. We need to quit pumping. We need out of the a groundwater basin using our surface water. Now, the treatment plants, even Little Knights Ferry has a water treatment plant. At both the sites for TID and, and Northern California Power Association, we built water treatment facilities on site that handled all the water that we had come in. And it was surface water brought in. We need to stop pumping. We need to keep every drop of our surface water here. And we need to be, uh, have water available for the residents. I have a daughter and grandson that lives in Oakdale. And the water is so terrible there, they don't even want to bathe in it, let alone drink it. So could we use a water treatment plant there? Absolutely. We need to stop worrying, stop being concerned with the short-term financial gain of exporting our water. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question will start with Mr. Tobias. What roles should transparency and the public interest play in the board's decision-making process? Well, transparency is, is, is communication. We need to make sure there's communication of, of fully, fully vetted ideas that are, that are, um, that are thrown about at, at the board level. Um, the way to do that is to make sure you follow the Brown Act, make sure you have plenty of, uh, plenty of backup materials and you do the, your proper homework and studies for these things. And uh, you wanna, we wanna make it, uh, we want full participation in this process, but we don't want it to become uh, um, adver adversarial. We, we'd like to have a nice open thing, open forum to where people get People are included in these things. And uh, we always did that before in the, in the boards I was on. And uh, we were very successful with that. And I think I missed the second part of that. Yeah, uh, the question was regarding public interest. Oh yeah, it, well, all they, the, it would be just provide the information that is, that is needed and we'll try to do as good a job as we can if, uh, we get, if I get elected. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Cooper, uh, you want me to read the question again? Would you please? Yes. What role should transparency and the public interest play in the board's decision-making process? Well, I think transparency is foremost the most important thing. I feel that the board is lopsided right now. I know two of the uh, opponents have, have, are financed by one of the largest landowners in Oakdale. And there seems to be a lot of the decision making that comes from that influence. The board needs to be open and honest with the constituents in Oakdale. It's foremost and, and of the utmost importance. And they need to be definitely a more user friendly. I've had to deal with o, uh, OID in the past. And I can tell you there's times when you're going to talk to them and they treat you like you're the enemy. That needs to stop. I think transparency at, at its minimum is a is a, a boost for OID. Seconds. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cooper. Yeah. Ms. Santos. Yes, uh, I ran in 2015 on transparency. I spent almost a year going to the board meetings and buying the agendas because they would vote on 25 items in one vote, no discussion, nothing. And I'm sitting in the audience wondering what our board is doing. After I got on the board, one of the things that uh, I made happen was that the agenda, the full packet agenda that the board uh, members get is now online and available for the public. So I accomplished that the first year that I was on the board. Transparency is absolutely imperative. 
you cannot function as a public entity and keep secrets about what you're doing with the people's money. Thank you very much. And finally, Mr. Dotinga. Would you like the question reread? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, what roles should transparency and the public interest play in the board's decision making process? Well, as, as Linda stated, um, she ran on transparency. And I think this is kind of a, an odd challenge there. Um, since open meeting laws and access to agendas and reports and data are all required and controlled by state law. So I'm not sure why my opponent thinks that OID is not compliant in that area. So, and she ran on transparency herself. And I, I've seen plenty of issues with her on the board where she was not being transparent um, and where there was a personal agenda behind what she was doing and the way she was voting and ruling on the board. So yeah, transparency is important. And that's one of the reasons why I'm running against my opponent. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next question will start out with Ms. Santos. Uh, OID has a history, and, and you've been discussing this, so it's plowing some of the same field, but I think it's important. OID has a history of selling water to users outside the district's boundaries. Recently, a Bay Area developer discussed a long-term OID water purchase and transfer. Do you favor the sale and transfer of OID water outside the district? Please explain. Ms. Santos. Not at all. The, I believe the water sale that you're discussing is one that has been in the works since 2015. I, as a board member, been on the board for five years, was never made aware of it until I got the information sent to me by somebody outside our district. And it's a 50 year water sale to the city of Brisbane. And it's for a development of a housing uh, developer in, over in Brisbane. Our water needs to stay here. We have farmers that need the water here. Instead of sending water across to another community to make them prosperous, why aren't we making sure that we keep our own communities viable? It's crazy. Uh, water is the lifeblood, as my uh, opponents have said. It's absolutely the lifeblood. You can't do anything without the water being here. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Dotinga? Mr. Dotinga? Repeat the question, please. Yes. OID has a history of selling water to users outside the district's boundaries. Recently, a Bay Area developer, and it was the Brisbane project, discussed a long-term OID water purchase and transfer. Do you favor the sale and transfer of OID water outside the district? Please explain. OID has a history of supplying water to its in-district constituents, and that is their primary focus. Secondly, they have made their water available to out of district farmers and, and it's unlimited. They, they, they've been able to get their full allotment every year in district, out of district farmers are able to do that as well, but they're not willing to pay for it. If they're not willing to pay the fair price for it, then OID needs to sell that water. They need to make money off that water because otherwise it's gonna go away anyway. We are not allowed to keep that surplus water here. Now we do have storage and yet that is not allowed because that's federal water. So um, I would only only rule to do that if it was water we, we, we were gonna lose anyways. 
Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Cooper, you're the next one. Should I reread the question? Uh, no, sir. Okay, uh, thank you. No, I'm, against selling, I'm against selling water to Brisbane. Now, when we talk about farmers that are outside the district, if they're under the, in, uh, the uh, sphere of influence by OID and they're on the same water basin, they should get that water first. But I can tell you, I've seen the documents. I've seen, I've talked to the farmers. They've been told, denied that they cannot have the water. One farmer in particular spent $700,000 on his ranch, a large ranch, for infrastructure only to be told no water because he was out of district, but under the sphere of influence. We need to take care of Oakdale first, and it's called Oakdale Irrigation District for a reason. It's not Brisbane. If we don't keep our surface water here and recharge our water basin, what are our properties going to be worth if we lose that water? So I am I'm definitely against that. Our water needs to stay here first and foremost before we sell one drop. Okay, thank you. Mr. Tobias? Okay. Um, yes, OID has sold water over the years. Um, if you're looking at a 50-year a, a deal to the city of Brisbane, no, I'm not in favor of that at all. I, I would look at um, the water rights that Oakdale has. They start March 1, end October 1. The rest of it goes to the city, I mean, the uh, Bureau of Reclamation. When you have a, a deal like that, you have to use it or you might be losing it. So if you take care of your in-district customers, which OID has done with the improvements they've made, and you offer it to out-of-district customers in the, some of these uh, pumpers that are at, um, outside of the district, I think it's a great deal. I'd love to sell them more water. But it's taking it to a, a long-term project to Brisbane, I'm, I'm not in favor of that at all. Um, I, I do... I do believe that uh, there's some common ground that we can make with a lot of people and maybe bring the price of some of this stuff down and make it work out. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna go on to question five and Mr. Cooper, you'll be asked to respond first. Yes, sir. Tra traditional media coverage of local government is declining. How is OID currently providing information to water users and district residents? And how can the district and the board improve informing district residents? Mr. Cooper. Well, the only way that you're going to get cooperation out of the district or the media, it's been my experience that I'm the founder and CEO of American Veterans First. I have media coverage on almost every event because we're open and transparent and we do the right thing. And I can tell you that OID is not constituent friendly. Uh, I have uh, friends that, uh, one friend in particular that has a 30 acre parcel. He's had it for 25 years. He's paid for OID water. He wants to break it down to five acre parcels. And he was told if he does, he will shut you off. All the infrastructure, everything is there. But if you give us $2,000 per acre, we'll continue to live with water to you. So when, when you, you hold the, uh, their feet to the flame, OID needs to be more constituent friendly and involve them more in the meetings. Let them be transparent. They're not very transparent at all. There's some secrecy that goes on there. And I can tell you the constituents that I've talked to don't like it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Tobias. Can you repeat that question? Yes, of course. Uh, traditional media coverage of local government is declining. How is OID currently providing information to water users and district residents? And how can the district and board improve informing district residents? Well, currently there's newsletters that come out and looking on the OID website, you can, you can dial in and look at your water use. I'm sure you can talk to the people the, your, your uh, distribution operator and, and get that information there too. Um, there, it's a matter of reports and stuff and uh, I, I, I think OID needs to continue to improve this. It's just a uh, communication uh, issue and uh, 
maybe they maybe they haven't done as well in the past. Times are changing. And look at the forum we're on right now. Um, these things can improve. We we I, I look forward to uh, making sure that people understand what's going on and what we're talking about and what their water use is. That's really important. Some of the good farmers I had in in uh, Modesto, they knew better than anybody what their water use was. And uh, they knew exactly what they were using and they appreciated the interest that MID, MID showed and I know OID will do this too. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Dotinga. Once again, repeat the question, please. Certainly. Uh, traditional media coverage of local governments has declined. How is OID currently providing information to water users and district residents? And how can the district and the board improve informing those people? Well, I, I, first of all, I want to respond to your statement that traditional media uh, coverage has declined. Affirmative. It has declined in quality right, right there. Um, media tends to focus on the negative and that's what has been focused on on the issues with the board um, the issues of lawsuits and uh, cases that were ruled against the board etc um, and yet the, the really the bottom line with those cases is that for example the uh, the situation with the environmental impact study that was brought on um, that was focused on negatively, it was ruled against the board. But the reason why that case was brought out was not to save some blue-bellied lizard. Uh, OID itself has done a phenomenal job of communicating with its constituents. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Santos. Yes, um, one of the things that uh, I had proposed the first year I was on the board, besides having the agenda put on the uh, uh, internet for the public was for the board members, the directors, to have a newsletter that each one of us could contribute comments and information that was um, relevant to the district or to the divisions that they uh, represented. And I was very surprised that a short time later we started receiving a general manager's newsletter that newsletter is put out without any uh interaction with at least not me as a director for my constituents nor any input has ever been asked from me to be included in that newsletter Thank you very much. Okay, uh, the next question will go first to Mr. Dotenga. Um, please explain how you want the OID board and the OID senior management to work together. How could the working relationship be improved? Mr. Dotenka? Could you repeat the question again? Sure. Please explain how you would like or who, how you want the OID board and senior management to work together and how could that working relationship be improved? Well, I think that relationship could be improved by electing me onto the board and and one of my primary reasons for running is to stop the lawsuits that are going on between my opponent and the board. So the board can't function well when, when they're not unified together, we're not working together. Now we're gonna have disagreements, there's no doubt about that. But when you have lawsuits and money being wasted, taxpayer money being wasted on those lawsuits, the board cannot function effectively. So that's, that is basically my position on that. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Santos? 
it's interesting that uh, Mr. Dodinga keeps bringing up the lawsuits since the two lawsuits that were brought against me were initiated by OID. The first one was brought against Director Altieri and myself because we told a judge that the OID minutes were accurate. Therefore, the judge made his ruling and scolded the district for dragging out something so minor for three years, wasting the district's money and our money. And we got our uh, attorney fees paid back. All, all we did was tell the truth and we were sued for it. The second one was one that was just brought again by the district because I was told to uh, cooperate and be quiet and I will not do that. That is not my job as a director on the OID board and I am not there for friends uh, and get togethers. I'm there okay. representing the people that voted me in. Thank you very much. Mr. Tobias, do you need the question restated? Uh, please. Okay, please explain how you would like or how well you would want the OID board and the OID senior management to work together, and how could that working relationship be improved? Okay, well, we have to work together, and my one of the statements I make in this is, it's always communication, cooperation, and coordination. I used to do that at MID, and, and it needs to be done here. We need to talk together, we need to talk in a civil manner, and, and not raise voices and have people yelling, but we need to explain things in a dignified manner that uh, uses logic and, uh, and education to bring us to a, to a consensus. Um, the, it might be, there may be necessary some uh, training. You know, the uh, Aqua has, has training for board members and maybe that would be a good training to have even the general manager review and, and go back into that some, some of that stuff. But, you still need to just work together and, and reason things out in a calm, dignified manner. And uh, I, I think that can be accomplished and I'm really supportive of, of the OID and, and, the, and the other board members, whoever they may be, and the manager. Thank you. Mr. Cooper? Uh, yes, sir. Well, I think there's always improvement for a board. I've been on several boards. I'm the CEO. I'm on the board of American Veterans First. I've attended some meetings at OID and had to, and have a question from the audience ask a question and had the GM tell that person, that's the most ignorant question I've ever heard. And, and the general manager, he needs to be reminded that he works for the board. He does not run the board. It's common knowledge. You talk to farmers that there's a very wealthy landowner that is the sixth board member. They have breakfast there almost every day. That board member, even though the building's cut off to the public, that particular landowner goes in the back door almost on a daily, if not three, four times a week. We need to have respect for each other. I think we've lost that. The fighting needs to stop, but I, I hate to see OID spend $300,000 of taxpayers' money on a frivolous lawsuit against the two uh, directors that we have. Thank you. Uh, it looks like the time is, is going and this will probably be our last question. So let me remind uh, the candidates that uh, I'll finish asking that last question and then it'll be time for closing comments. And that will be a two minute timing on closing comments. The last question is something you, you all brought up and that was the Central Valley has recently experienced a severe drought and increased the dependence on groundwater for agricultural, municipal, and industrial users. In many areas, the groundwater aquifer is becoming depleted and land subsidence has occurred. What role can and should OID play in helping ensure the long-term health of the aquifer? And we'll start out with Mr. Tobias, please. Okay, the, the, the role that the OID should play is to try as, as best they can is to keep people on surface water. 
get as much of that surface water used as possible, even to the, uh, to the pumpers to the north and, and, the, and to the outside of the district. It, it's, it's extremely imperative that we do that. And some of the infrastructure improvements we have done have made improvements to that. Um, and I'll cite the regulating reservoirs. They're a great benefit to the groundwater. But in my experience at, M at, o at MID, the, uh, the groundwater is something that is, is variable. It's not a homogeneous, perfect little lake underneath us. There's variable in quality and quantity. So it needs to be mapped and, and uh, studied so that we can do the right thing and, and make, uh, make surface water available so those re aquifers are recharged for uh, domestic use. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of domestic wells out there for the, all the little farmers and ranchers that are out there. And uh, there, it's really important that we do that and maybe get the city to even stop pumping and use some of the surface water. That would help. Thank you. Mr. Cooper? Uh, yes, sir. Well, this year, MI, or OID's uh, allotment from the Stanislaus is 300,000 acre feet. Their projected usage this year is 245,000 square feet. At least 55,000, I'm sorry, acre feet. That water must stay here. To ship it out of the, out of the area to Brisbane or to the Westlands, I think is a, a at best a temporary financial gain. We need to quit living in the past. We need to look to the future. And if somebody's worked for uh, an irrigation district for 25 years, why why are we waiting till right now to say here's what we need to do? Why haven't we done that? We lose our water here, our groundwater aquifer, we're in trouble. I've talked to farmers, I've looked at their wells. Seconds. Certain wells have dropped as much as 95 feet in 10 years. One on Oakdale Waterford Highway is 55 feet. That's an alarming drop in our groundwater basin. Thank you. Mrs. Santos? Yeah. I uh, what Duke was talking about is uh, absolutely correct. The water stays here. We, fig we spend our money, the people's money, to make sure the constituents and the sphere of influence is supplied with as much surface water as we have. We should use every drop of the 300,000 acre feet of water right here. We sell some to Stockton East, that's within our sphere of influence, that's within our basin. We could sell to the city of Oakdale. There's 10,000 acre feet set aside for them, as Mr. Dodinga said. There is water available for landowners that are pumping groundwater right now. By using the surface water, we save that for when we do have a drought. It should be the backup for the, um, for the farmers and the city, it should not be the primary source of water, nor is it a revenue to be sold at the highest bidder. Thank you. Mr. Dotting. I am all for keeping our water local, just as my opponent wants to do. Um, and the district has made that water available to our local constituents and to the out of district farmers. And if there's, if there is anything left over that they don't buy, okay, the, the, the district needs to make money on that because that improves our infrastructure. So I'm not, you know, it, it, OID generates like almost $5 million when it sells surplus water. And that's what has made OID what it is, our ability to do that. But, you know, why everybody is saying that we are selling water that we, we should could hang on to. We don't have the storage to hang on to that water. It's use it or lose it. And that's exactly what we're, we're doing already in the district. So I'm not really sure why that is the case with my opponent. Thank you. Okay, we have come to the point where we're going to ask you to do closing comments. We will start out with Mr. T Mr. Tobias first and then Mr. Cooper, and this, then Mr. Dotenga, and this, then Mrs. Santos. So, Mr. Tobias, please. Okay, I wanna, I wanna thank everyone. I wanna thank the League of Women Voters for 
trying out this new uh, scheme that we have here, and uh, it's been interesting. But um, you know, my 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 statement is that you know, water boards must be a team, and we need to present solutions. We need to be proactive in these matters, and uh, we stand at a critical time for the politics in in California and California agriculture in Stanislaus County. Um, it's a great opportunity to make some really good things happen. And I look forward to being, continue to be part of the evolving miracle of California water. Um, one of the things that I think is, is not communicated quick clearly is that the OID customer, the in-district customer has been paying for a hundred years to develop and, and run, build the canals, legal protection, staff, um, all types of all types of things, and they've they've paid for a hundred years for this, but the people on the outside have never paid a dime. But they're demanding the people that have paid for this all these years to take care of them. I think there's a balance we can achieve with that. I don't think it's it's something that needs to be uh, we need to uh, profiteer with them on. But I think there's a way to keep that here. But 55,000 acre feet, a difference you're talking about, that's a lot of water. And I don't know where you're gonna put it all. Um, the, the OID irrigator has, has had enough water over the years and we wanna continue that. And we wanna continue with the improvements that have, that have made the system more efficient so that we can serve everybody better. And uh, there's communication, communication opportunities that we need to explore so that we can all get on the same page and get this done right. I really look forward for a positive direction. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tobias. Mr. Cooper. Well, uh, in, in response to uh, OID water and the farmers don't wanna pay for it, I've talked to farmers, they've showed me the documentations and the letters from OID refusing them water. But yet the farm right next door, which is the largest landowner in Oakdale, he gets water. Now that to me is an unfair, not very transparent situation that OID perpetuates on a daily basis. Now the 55,000 acre feet, uh, the farmers I talked to, they said they will pay top premium dollar to have that water delivered and they'll put the infrastructure in. So the, the rumor that goes around that they want it for free, I can tell you the farmers I've talked to, I've looked at letters from OID is untrue. These farmers need that water desperately. They're going to, instead, they're pumping as little water as possible. They're going to micro irrigating instead of flood irrigating. And these farmers, I've seen their wells, look at the document and where they've dropped 55 foot in 10 years, 95 feet in 20 years. What are we gonna have in 10 more years? We can't wait. 10 more years or 20 years. And if somebody's had 25 years on an MID board and we're just now coming to a solution to fix that problem, something's wrong there. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Uh, Mr. Dotinga, please. Well, I just wanna reiterate what my goals are on the board, um, primarily to stop the expensive lawsuits, and which I believe my opponent is primarily responsible for. Uh, control OID costs, and that includes, you know, stopping the lawsuits, because uh, those lawsuits have cost the district thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. Um, and then to keep our water local, you know, that's, that's an issue I think we can all agree on. Um, or how we do that is an issue that may not be something we all agree on. And then improving our city water support is, is a primary thing. So um, those are the things that I intend to do on the board. But th there, was, there was one thing I wanted to, I wanted to mention. I, I was absolutely shocked when my opponent disclosed to the Republican committee on Monday evening that she was the reason for the dysfunction on the board. Um, she stated that she had been censured three times and had legal action against her for taking confidential legal papers out of closed session. The board disciplined her for these, these, these illegal acts. That included violating the Brown Act, 
and violating employee contracts on four occasions. So these are the ones that they know of. How many other situations are there? Uh, so the, uh, these issues alone have cost the district and her constituents tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees and that number has the potential to reach millions if try down lawsuits move forward. So she claims to be a disruptor of the status quo and that she is breaking up the good old boys network, but that is just not true. These are illegal actions by Linda Santos that the board has been trying to correct. Her actions have not benefited our district. They have caused great harm to our district. We need directors who will work for the good of the district, not to advance their own personal agenda at any cost. I have no personal agenda, except to faithfully re represent my constituents when I'm elected. Thank you, Mr. Dotinga. And finally, Ms. Santos, please. Well, that sounds like we're having a lot of fun, aren't we, this evening after we had that conversation. It's interesting that I'm blamed for legal actions that were taken against me. I didn't initiate them. The district initiated them against me and they lost because they were not truthful. I won, I'm still here. They tried to recall me, I won the recall. I'm still here. I was censured three times, I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere because I speak up. I don't sit back and vote the way I'm told to vote. I research, I spent a year going to board meetings before I ever ran for the district. I have never seen Mr. Dodinga at a meeting. I have never seen Mr. Tobias at a meeting. Mr. Cooper has been to some meetings. I researched before I ever stepped my foot in the OID pond and I was prepared for what I'm doing. I know what needs to be done because I have been the recipient of tremendous, tremendous harassment. But you know what? I'm a tough old broad and I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay right here and fight for the people that elected me in my district. And I'm one vote. So I don't know why I scare the tar out of uh, the rest of the board or the general manager, I only have one vote. It's only because I force a discussion to be made in public and they don't want it. They want to keep me quiet. Otherwise, the board could be two to three, four to one. What They still have control of the board. What they don't have control of is me and I am not controlled by anybody. Thank you. Vote for me. Thank you, Mrs. Santos. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, I want to again thank the candidates who were kind enough to give us uh, an, oh, well over an hour of their time this evening. Uh, and we look forward to you uh, completing your races and hopefully uh, it comes out in a successful, uh, as a successful election. I'd also like to give particular credit to Amy Wolf, whose abilities, uh, vigor, um, sharp stick, and uh, very direct knowledge of this technology has made this production possible. So thank you very much, Amy. And with that, I think I either turn it over to Amy or I say goodnight. Thank you, George.